The entry to the Panama Canal on the Pacific side is near the island of Naos. There you will see many ships awaiting their turn to make the transit through the canal. The island is joined to the mainland by a long breakwater. This is the Museum of Biodiversity. Behind the breakwater you can see parts of the city of Panama and Balboa. As you move inland the first bridge we will see is the old bridge of the Americas. This is part of the Pan American Highway. Immediately after the bridge is the port of Balboa. This port serves the canal and is linked to the north coast of Panama by a railway at the port of Colón. The port has extensive facilities to handle all types of shipping and is fully equipped with tugs, cranes and container handling services which of course are used by ships transiting the canal and also with the rail link. An extensive number of very modern tugs are available in the canal who provide watchful services to shipping as they move through. These tugs are very sophisticated, high powered and fully equipped with winches and in fact move very quickly through the canal as various ships come and go. We're also watched over by the frigate bird which you will see at all interfaces between the salt and fresh water. This is part of the construction of the new locks which should be open in 2014. Immediately after the port the waterway narrows and you can see the first series of locks as we move forward. There are three locks on each end of the canal which lift the ships to the level of Lake Gatton which is 85 feet above sea level. Behind us you'll see a bulk carrier which indicates just how busy and how quickly ships move through the canal. The locks on this side are split into two groups, the first being at Miraflores which has two lock chambers, then at Pedro Miguel which has a single lock chamber. On the left hand side of the uh, lock wall you'll see small locomotives. There's a large number of these. These are used to assist ships in positioning in the lock and also to avoid denting the ship side, damaging the concrete or scraping the paintwork. The ships move into the locks with their own power but as they go in and are positioned in the locks, these locomotives, called mules, keep the ship centred in the lock. The locomotives not only move along a straight track, but they also have to move up and down the inclines between the levels of the locks. These are very steep, and because of this, they have a rack and pinion drive to assist in the drive between the locomotive and the track. These white buildings are the original construction. 
of the canal when it was first opened in 1914. The bulk carrier which was following us has now entered the lock alongside and will proceed with us as we move from the first lock to the second and then into Lake Miraflores which is immediately following the Miraflores locks. This lake is about 57 feet above sea level. The lock raises the ships from Miraflores at 57 feet to 85 feet, the level of Lake Gatton. The lock piers have a long central pier between them, which allows for the alignment of the ship prior to entering the lock gates into each of the chambers. You can see the ship in front of us has just moved out of the locks into Lake Gatton for the transit all the way to the Gatton Lakes at the north end of the canal. The white water you see on the right hand side is a discharge from Lake Gatton into Lake Miraflores. The ship is entering the lock and will move forward close to the gates at the front. Then the gates behind will be closed, the water level will be raised, the gates opened and the ship proceed forward. These gates are massive. They weigh 700 tons each, are approximately 64 feet wide, 7 feet thick and up to 72 feet high. They were built like a ship being hollow and thus when submerged in the water the buoyancy from the gates almost offsets the weight which limits the amount of power necessary to move these gates. Something like a small 45 horsepower motor is sufficient to open and close them. They do open and close in a very short period of time of a few minutes. The gates are open, the ship will move forward and you can see the ever watchful tug ready to pick up the bow of the ship and ensure it has a safe transit into the next stage of the canal. This splendid bridge ahead is the Centennial Bridge, also part of the Pan American Highway. It is built at the entrance to the Culebra Cut, which was the cut through the Continental Divide that caused so much difficulty in the initial construction of the canal. The orange derricks you can see below the bridge are rigs being used to drill blast holes. These holes are being used to open the canal further for the larger ships which will be using the canal from, 19, from 2014 onwards. The Calabra Cut is almost nine miles long and leads into the Lake Garten. The first vessel we met in the transit was a very large sophisticated suction dredger. Yes, this is a very narrow shipping channel. The silt and soil removed by the dredger is pumped down that long pipeline to the shore where it is used to reinforce the beach.
the Canal Authority spends over $150 million US on dredging each year just to keep the channel clear and to assist in progressively widening the shipping channel. He thinks there's plenty of room. One of the observations is that it was surprising that the canal was not more straight. This is the challenging right hand bend. It is difficult enough to steer a ship in close quarters, in a channel, but when one also has to manoeuvre, the difficulty increases immensely. At this point, one can be forgiven for wondering if we can pass port to port. This is pretty close for a large car carrier. And much to the surprise, it was interesting to see the tug behind the ship providing steerage, and almost concerning when you look at the angle between the tug and the ship. No sooner one ship gone and another arrives. This is a typical small to medium sized cargo carrier loaded with containers. This is definitely interestingly close. And again, it was surprising to see the tug providing steerage behind the container ship. This is a trip I have always wanted to make. I wanted to see for myself the size of this project and to get a feel for just how significant it is. I don't intend to give a history lesson, but it is amazing just exactly what those who started to build this canal in the early 20th century had to deal with. They had to drain a swamp, they had to exterminate mosquitoes, remove a mountain, and if that was not enough, they had to tame the Chagas River, which is one of the most dangerous in this part of the world. Another not minor issue was that this canal was originally envisaged as a sea level canal similar to the Suez, but for the good fortune that Th Theodore Roosevelt appointed John Stevens as the second chief engineer, this would have been a disaster. Stevens was a very successful railroad construction engineer who had built much of the Northern Railroad in the United States. 
The beginning of the project by the United States was a disaster. Stephen stopped progress, cleaned the place up, made it habitable. He appointed Dr. William Gorgas to eliminate the Stegomaya mosquito and he started off realizing very quickly that the biggest problem we had was to move the dirt and rock which had to be excavated not only through the central divide but also across the remainder of the canal. The failed attempt by the French led to the loss of almost 22,000 men during the construction. This was mainly caused by malaria and yellow fever, which of course Dr. Gorgas had eliminated during the construction by the United States. Stevens convinced Theodore Roosevelt that it was necessary to build a lock canal dam the Chagres River, turn it into a lake and proceed to at least limit the amount of dirt that had to be removed from the big ditch through the Culebra Cut. Had he not done this, this would have been an abject failure. Then came the military engineers of Gothel and Siebert who constructed the massive locks and in the course of construction, almost 50,000 men were employed to build these locks. In my opinion, this truly is one of the engineering wonders of the world, and it is amazing that this was built in 19 and complete in 1914 and has been open ever since. It has been safe, successful and a vital trade route between the East and the West. Lake Gatton, formed by the damming of the Chagres River, is vital to this whole project. It is only because of the huge rainfall that this can, canal can continue to operate is with the scale that it has. This is the Gatton Lake Dam, which is the engine for this entire canal. Immediately adjacent to the Gatton Dam are the locks, which provide the three steps between the lake and the Atlantic. A busy place, and just look at that big fella in front who has only two feet clearance on either side of the ship as he goes through the canal. Our ship is about to enter the first lock of the Gatton Locks. It is great to see the relaxed observers on the bow of the ship. This short video clip will show just how quickly or slowly each gate opens in the canal. The upper lock in each series usually has two gates which are there as a safety precaution in the event that a ship should hit one of the gates and cause a catastrophe. There are no water pumps in this operation, so the water is transferred from the lake through each lock in succession, purely by gravity, and it enters the lock with minimum turbulence to ensure that the ship is not pushed into the side of the lock. Our ship is now moving forward behind the large ship in front. This ship 
is at the limit of the Panamax class in terms of width. In front you can see the channel towards the bay which leads into the Atlantic. The tidal range here is very small. It's only two and a half feet compared to 24 feet on the Pacific side. The ship in front is about to move out of the last lock into the open channel and out to the Atlantic. You can see the ship on the right clear of the locks and about to enter the channel. The ship in front is likewise about to descend and leave the final lock. Our ship is about to move into lock 2 and the ship in front is just clear of lock 3. You can clearly see the difference in, in lock level which is approximately 28 feet. Our four deck observers have done a great job in taking us so far. With the ship in front out of the lock and clear, the gate will close. Water from our lock will flow also into the lock in front to raise its level. Then we will move forward into the last lock and when that is complete, the lock will drain and take us to sea level. The lock water levels are now equal, the gates are opening, and we will move forward into the final lock in this stage. Most of the foredeck observers have gone, except for the intrepid. Water is being transferred from the lock into the ocean, a total of 26 million gallons. This amount of fresh water is spilt at each end of the canal and hence the necessity of having the high tropical rainfall in that huge lake behind the Gatton Dam. The final lock gates into the Atlantic are open and we are about to leave and make our way from there to the next port of call. The open channel leads to the Bahia Limon where many other ships will be seen waiting their turn to make the transit in the opposite direction. This was a wonderful trip. I've enjoyed it and look forward to making the trip in the opposite direction as soon as I can.